So let's start with hydrocarbons today. So we know hydrocarbons are organic compounds which contain only hydrogen and carbon. Okay. So hydrocarbons are of three types. Let's look. The first type is aliphatic hydrocarbons. Okay. The first type is aliphatic hydrocarbons. The second type is alicyclic hydrocarbons and the third type is aromatic hydrocarbons or aromatic compounds. So in short if I want to tell I just say aliphatic compounds are of two types saturated and unsaturated. So these we have learnt in our lower classes as well and alicyclic they are cyclo compounds and aromatic usually consists of benzene. So this is benzene that is C6H6. Right? Now coming to the first one that is aliphatic compounds. In that aliphatic compounds we have two types. Those are saturated and in saturated we have alkanes and we have unsaturated. Yeah. So unsaturated we have again more two types. Those are alkenes and alkynes. So in this chapter we are going to look about each and every property of alkenes, alkenes and alkynes starting with the preparation methods chemical properties as well as physical properties. So let's go on. So coming to the first topic which is alkanes. So alkanes are the compounds which are of the form or have the general formula CN H2N plus 2. In easier way if we say they are aliphatic saturated compounds <coughs> okay which have single bond right here as you can see they have single bond. Right? This is propane. Here it is CH3, CH3 and here CH2. Right? So this is propane. That is butane. Right? So A and I am applying. Methane, propane, butane. These are called alkanes. Now coming to the preparation methods. So there are 8 preparation methods as you can see. All 8 are on your screen. So First is hydrogenation. Hydrogenation of unsaturated compounds. See, as I told, alkene is an unsaturated compound. So, this is an unsaturated compound over here. So, I am adding hydrogen, which is called hydrogenation, to give alkene, which is a sing, which is having a single bond. Right? C, C is having single bond like this. Carbon, carbon, here, H3, H3. Okay, as you can see carbon valency is also satisfying that is one bond over here and three over here. Valency of carbon is four, right? So here the important ones are here this reaction takes place in the presence of three elements that is nickel or platinum or palladium. Okay, the second reaction is Wurtis reaction. So here alkyl halides that is this alkyl halides react with sodium in presence of dry ether. Here also one more star as you can see dry ether to give alkanes. So here alkyl halides react with sodium to give alkanes. Okay, the whole reaction goes like Rx plus 2Na giving RR plus 2NaX. Okay. So for example, if I apply 2 CH3Cl where X is halogen chlorine. Okay. So here same 2 Na would be same. So here I am having 2 CH3. This here I will get CH3 CH3 that is my ethane. And this chlorine will come here that is I will get NaCl 2 NaCl. So this would be my reaction. Very very important in the presence of dry ether. Remember, if dry ether comes, then it is Wurtis reaction and we will get one alkane with a sodium salt. 
okay sodium salt of that halogen now coming to the third one that is reduction of alkyl halides so again we have alkyl halide over here that is rx right here i am reducing it right means i am adding h plus ions right so we know oxidation and reduction right oxidation means adding hydrogen reduction means adding oxidation is adding oxygen reduction is adding hydrogen right so reduction means addition of hydrogen so i am adding hydrogen over here right here i am adding hydrogen as an atom but here in hydrogenation i am adding hydrogen as a molecule this is the difference and here i am having alkene in hydrogenation while in reduction of alkyl halides i have here alkyl halide i am adding hydrogen in the presence of li al h4 or na bh4 so you have many many react many reagents like this for example zn ch3 cooh okay so many three are there with zinc that is firstly ch3 cooh with zinc then zinc with hcl then zinc with naoh okay so what i will get with this reaction i will get i have 2h here right 1h will go with my alkyl group 1h will go with my halide group that is i will get rh plus hx so here you need to remember that i am adding hydrogen atom to alkyl halide group right and here i am adding sodium to alkyl halide group in wurtis reaction right so this is the difference now the fourth one is decarboxylation actually in the next one was coal base electrolysis but we will finish off the small ones decarboxylation you need to remember carboxylation adding co2 decarboxylation removing co2 okay so what we will do r c o o n a we will take r c o o n a and we will act react the reagent here is soda lime you can remember the name as well which is soda lime okay so the rea reagent is soda lime here and i am reacting soda lime with r c o o n a now what will happen here this c o o n a and over here this n a o n a o these all will come together and i will get na2 co3 you can match 1 na 1 na 2 na 1 2 3 3 oxygen co3 okay and what is remaining with me alkyl is remaining 1h is remaining okay rh okay so you need to break down like this now coming to if i take a simple example that is methane ch3 coona then i will react it with this what will happen this whole group will vanish out right what i will get one more h will be added here right the remaining h i will get methane right ch4 plus same na2 co3 okay now coming to kore house synthesis which of the fifth one so you can just remember like this kore house synthesis okay so here we have the word house so in house we have many people right we have many relatives so here also we have many relatives with us many elements are there many reactants as well as many products right so the first reactant over here is r2 cu li that is dialkyl i am naming it in front of you 2r that is dialkyl lithium and cu means cuprate dialkyl lithium cuprate okay i am reacting this with rx again okay reacts with alkyl halide to get here as you can see it is r dash so in this first reacted the r is different that is the alkyl group is different while here also the alkyl group is different okay so these two alkyl groups join together and what is left with me i have two these two r right one r went here i have one more r with me okay this r and this cu left over is this halogen and this lithium i'll get lix okay 
simple reaction you just need to remember house many people okay now coming to green guards reagent okay now what is this green guard reagent this is the green guards reagent that is r m g x that is alkyl magnesium halide okay x is halide plus h2 so these are all the things in which in their presence we will get rh that is alkane plus mg oh x okay so for example h2o nh3 coh roh r nh2 so these are all the things which should be present or any one of them is present then we will get this okay so for example if i take i will take here simple example that is yeah so this is what one two here we have two carbon atoms okay and here it is mg br okay so this i am reacting with water what i will get simply rh here i have two carbon so i will get ch3 ch3 why i am get ch3 ch3 here it is already ch3 one more hydrogen is getting added to this atom right this carbon so i will get ch3 ch3 single bond that is ethane plus mg oh x now what is my halogen it is bromine right so mg oh x that is magnesium hydroxide that is magnesium hydroxy bromine okay magnesium hydroxy bromine now sixth one done coming to seventh one that is coal based electrolysis so here alkanes are formed by electrolysis of the solution okay so here you can see this is the solution i am electrolyzing it plus and minus ions right so electrolysis of the solution of potassium or sodium salts right here you can see i have sodium with me sodium salt is there right and here we are reacting it with sodium salt okay sodium salts of saturated mono carboxylic acid okay so coo as we know it is carboxylic acid right cooh we know okay so now let's see the reaction so first of all first step is electrolysis right so rcoona i dissociate it into rcoo minus and na plus right now the next step coming to reacting it with h2o okay that is water so two times rcoona plus 2h2o will give me rr i got my alkane right alkane we wanted i got my alkane plus 2 co2 okay so whatever i have drawn in this cloud type thing it is obtained at the anode and we will also get naoh plus h2o right so these two we will get at the cathode how see we have two r these two r will form rr that is alkane okay i got my alkane next step what is left over coo co2 again we have two so two co2 right now what is left over this na is left over and 2h2o is left over so out of this 2h2o what i will do i will take two oh minus outside and i have my na plus what will happen naoh two naoh right again i have two na two oh minus two naoh and what is left over again i have only h2 left over right so i will get my h2 also so this is coal based electrolysis now coming to the eighth and last preparation method that is using metal carbides okay so metal carbides like here you can see it is aluminium carbide al2c3 right metal carbides on hydration give alkanes hydration adding water hydrogenation adding hydrogen hydration adding water okay so al2c3 plus adding water h2o i'll get 3ch4 now how do we know that we will get three moles of ch2 of course we know here it is alc3 al2c3 right so of course we will get 3ch4 plus now how many aluminium do we have two and here we'll have two aloh thrice okay so here we have four why because carbon valency is four right carbon valency is four we will get like this aluminium valency three 
carbon 4 exchange right so we will get al4 c3 so here also 4 al oh thrice okay so these were all the preparation methods we will just quickly recap first is hydrogenation in that we need to remember these three that is nickel platinum palladium okay Wurtis reaction dry ether reduction of alkyl halides you need to remember H atom okay hydrogen atom decarboxylation soda line that is NaOH and CaO okay so whenever these all reagents are present you can quickly identify the type of reaction and when you identify the type of reaction you will get to know the answer as well okay next fifth one is Kore house synthesis okay so here you need to remember that is dialkyl lithium cuprate right you need to remember this if you get this in the question then it is Kore house synthesis okay next one Grignard's reagent here you will get directly this reagent that is alkyl magnesium halide okay and with that these all can react and they will give you alkane and MgOHx now coming to seventh one that is Colvase electrolysis <coughs> the one, of course the first step is electrolysis right that is electrolysis of R, C, O, O, N, A what I will get? N, A is the plus group left over is the minus group right so R, C, O, O minus plus N, A I did the electrolysis ok dissociation done first step done second I will take out my alkane why because I am searching for preparation method of alkane right so I will take out my alkane that is R, R now with that alkane these two are CO2 groups ok so alkane and CO2 you can remember after R C comes so R R that is alkane and CO2 will be formed at the anode and always remember at anode oxidation takes place and at cathode of course reduction ok now I am left with COO done R done right here now I am left with Na and 2Na and 2H2O right so of course Dissolving sodium in water, I will get sodium hydroxide and H2 gases evolve. Okay, so this symbol represents evolution of the gas. Okay, now the next one, last one was using metal carbides that is Al4, C3 plus H2O giving 3 CH4 plus 4 AlOH thrice. So here we are done with preparation methods of alkanes. Coming to the next topic that is chemical properties of alkanes. The first one is halogenation. Of course, the word itself says addition of halogen. Right? Halogenation means addition of halogen. So here, as you can see, I am adding chlorine to methane in the presence of sunlight. It will give me CH3Cl. Okay? That is plus HCl. Okay? As you can see, one bond is replaced by chlorine and both the chlorines are also present it is a balanced reaction right now here we will see a process known as free radical chlorination of methane i am taking the same methane and i am doing free radical chlorination so this consists of three processes that is initialization of that chain propagation and termination initialization propagation termination okay so the first thing is chain initialization ok so on initiation now Cl2 I am breaking the bond first of all why because I need this Cl, Cl radicals right so Cl I will get two radicals so how did I get these radicals this is because Cl2 is undergoing homolytic fission right here you can see if I am writing Cl Cl bond here it is going under homolytic fission that is this bond is going like this and like this. I am not showing full arrow as you can see. So I will get two radicals like this. Okay. So this is homolytic fission. Now coming to propagation. The second step. So first step I broke out chlorine. Okay. I got two radicals. Second step. I am spreading it. Means what? I am getting more radicals now. How? CH4 methane plus one chlorine radical. What I will get? I will get methyl free radical. Okay methyl free radical plus HCl ok so this 1H is taken by this chlorine ok so the next step is this 
free methyl radical okay free ethyl radical what i will do i will just react it with cl2 okay cl2 which will give me ch3cl plus chlorine radical again okay so these two reactions are present in propagation coming to termination termination what i do i terminate all the radicals and i will get the fine products okay no radicals now here ch3 ch3 both radicals okay what i'll get i'll get a ch3 ch3 bond okay these radicals will form a bond together okay how i separated a bond into two radicals so these two radicals will come together and again form a bond okay so similarly chlorine chlorine cl2 and again ch3 cl ch3 cl will get so this was halogenation now coming to second aromatization as we know aromatic compounds usually means fully includes almost benzene okay it almost includes benzene that is c6h6 right yeah so this is what a six carbon chain 1 2 3 4 5 6 right six carbon chain aromatization i will do and i'll get benzene okay so this aromatization is done in the presence of al2o3 or cr2o3 and in the particular temperature that is 600 degrees celsius and particular temperature that is 15 atm okay next coming to isomerism isomerization okay converting into isomers very easy process again this is butane i am using anhydrous alcl3 okay to convert it into this again here also we have four carbon atoms only but it is just an isomer that is two methyl propane how did i name it 1 2 3 here i am having ch3 that is methyl group two methyl this is three propane okay longest carbon chain is propane right so two methyl propane now coming to the next one that is sulfonation okay sulfonation okay now before that sorry nitration okay so by the name only you can see nitration okay nitrogen right something nitric acid nitration nitric acid just remember like this sulfonation sulfuric acid okay so these two are very very easy okay combustion is also very easy let's go to nitration first see i have a simple alkane that is ch3 ch2 ch3 propane right so propane i'm reacting in the presence of reagent concentrated hno3 okay so what i'll get ch3 ch2 the last hydrogen i am replacing it with no2 group so what i will get i will get nitro propane okay simple i will get nitro propane now coming to sulfonation sulfonation again simple i am just replacing this hydrogen i will add so3h group this is also a functional group right sulfonic acid functional group so i will get here ethyl sulfonic acid this is ethyl this is sulfonic acid right now coming to combustion we all know that combustion of alkanes will give us carbon dioxide and h2o only whether it be methane ethane or any alkane just you need to balance it properly right now coming to pyrolysis or cracking the name itself suggests cracking right so here i have hexane i am heating it so what i am do see 1 2 3 4 5 six carbon chain right so here i will crack it so 1 2 3 1 2 3 right simply simple reaction so here i will take it simply ch3 ch2 and here i will get a radical of ch2 okay why because i am breaking a bond i am doing fission again right i am doing homolytic fission so same in the next three carbon chain also i will get firstly a radical right so here what i will do i will convert this radical into bond here so what i will get ch3 ch2 ch2 double bond okay so here i am getting double bond which is propene right so this is position 1 prop 1 in right propene and this side what i do i will add hydrogen radical so if i am adding hydrogen radical here two radicals they will form a bond of course so i will get ch3 ch2 ch3 that is propane i will get propene as well as propane from one hexane okay i am cracking this hexane and i am getting propene as well as propane so i get, am getting one alkane as well as one alkene so this is pyrolysis so let's start with physical properties now 
of alkanes physical properties so in physical properties we have the first property that alkanes are colorless compounds okay second one is the state okay state differs from carbon number of carbons so c1 to c4 that is carbons having carbon compounds having number of carbons 1 to 4 are usually gases okay then again of course c5 to c17 okay they are liquids okay then the next one is c18 and plus that is and about that is c19 20 etc they all are solids okay so these are the two properties next is solubility okay in solubility we have alkanes being non polar okay so alkanes are non polar in nature so of course they are soluble in non polar solvents right water is a polar solvent so it is not soluble in water alkanes are not soluble in water but they are soluble in non polar solvents like c6h6 that is benzene and ccl4 cs2 etc okay then the third one is boiling point fourth one is boiling point i'll write it bp okay boiling point is directly proportional to molecular mass so you can relate it with this that is more the number of mass more the boiling point okay now coming to in the same in isometric alkanes okay isomeric alkanes okay when i talk about isomeric alkanes for example when we talk about isomerization right so we have butane okay so this isomer is okay to be high propane right so when i talk about isomers in this case the boiling point is directly proportional to surface area okay which is but inversely proportional to branching okay inversely proportional to branching for example if i take a question here okay that is taking normal pentane okay and one more i'll take that is isopentane okay that is 2 methyl 2 methyl butane right and one more i'll take 2 comma 2 dimethyl propane right so these all of course have five atoms only of carbon 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 so they are isomers right so here as you can see this third one let this be 3 2 1 so this has most number of branching so it is having the least boiling point okay three is having the least boiling point second it is again having branching lesser than one so this is the boiling point order now coming to density fourth one was boiling point fifth one is density okay same formula again density is also directly proportional to molecular mass more the mass more the density okay as the number of carbon atom increases density also increases okay number of carbon atoms increases then density also increases similarly melting point i write it over here melting point right so melting point is also directly proportional to molecular mass okay also directly proportional to molecular mass and here if you can see one more example we can take here that is hexane okay normal hexane if i take it's this way and now taking two methyl pentane means i am joining this branch that is pentane two methyl okay and the next one is 